Hello, good day. This recording is made for those students who were not able to attend our session this morning. The lesson is all about compound interest, particularly about finding the compound amount. So the learning objectives for this lesson are the following. First, at the end of the lesson, you should be able to differentiate simple interest from the compound interest. And the second one is to solve problems involving compound interest, particularly about finding the compound amount. So as we all know, there are only two kinds of interest, the simple interest and the compound interest. So how do these interest types differ? So from the word itself, simple interest is a very plain computation of interest wherein you're going to multiply the principal by the rate of interest and the term and that happens only once. On the other hand, if we are dealing with the compound interest, it means that you are going to compute interest over and over depending on the number of conversion periods for a particular time. So for this particular lesson, we will be dealing with computations about the compound amount. But before that, let's have some definitions. Compound interest is the sum by which the original principal has been increased by the end of the contract. But if we are going to compare this with uh, the simple interest, the compound interest is usually greater than the simple interest because the computation of the interest happens not only once. The total accumulated amount at the end of the period, the original principal plus the compound interest is known as the compound amount. So this is similar to the final amount that we are computing in the simple interest. But this time the term is compound amount because this is a result of a lot of numbers that we have computed over time. Another thing that we should know is M. M refers to the number of conversion period and it is slated at one if it is annually or if the conversion or computation for the interest happens once a year, so your M is equal to one. If it is semi-annually, the value of M is two because semi-annually means having the computation of interest twice a year. For a quarterly, M is equal to four because there are four quarters in one year and monthly, means that the number of conversion is 12. So please remember the values for the different conversion periods. These conversion periods will be used later on if we are going to identify the overall or the total number of conversion periods for the whole term that is designated by letter N. And that is equal to the product of your term, which is in years or the time, and your M, which is depending on the problem given, the conversion period. So say for example, the problem states that for 10 years, you're going to have the conversion semi-annually. So 10 will be our representation for T. And since it is semi-annually, we're going to substitute M with two. So 10 times two, it means that the value of N, the total number of conversion period will be 20. On the other hand, if we will have the quarterly conversion for five years, for example, so we will have five times four since quarterly is four. So that will become 20 as a value of N. So that is another concept that we will be applying when solving for compound interest, particularly of the compound amount. First example, we're going to solve this using the manual computation for the compound interest so that we will know the relationship between the simple and the compound interest. And later we will use the formula to solve it uh, efficiently. Find the compound amount of 20,000 pesos compounded semi-annually for two years at 12%. So we are going to get these details later because uh, for the simple computation, all we need to do is to get the principal, that's 20,000 pesos. And from that, we're going to compute for our interest rate. But we will not use 12% as stated in this problem because we have to consider also that the 
conversion will happen semi-annually. So twice a year or two years. So that is 12% divided by two because it happens twice a year. So therefore the interest rate will be 6%. So those are the things that we need to do, that we need to consider rather in solving for the compound amount using the simple interest formula. So from the 20,000 peso in uh, principal rather, we are going to multiply the 6% interest rate that we have calculated. So the 20, thousand pesos times six percent will give us the interest of 1200 pesos so the inter the interest 1200 pesos plus the original principal will give us 21200 pesos and that happened at the end of six months when we computed the first uh, interest because it happens twice a year the semi-annual term in the problem is already a clue for us to know that the interest computation will be every six months since there are 12 months in a year. So we are not yet done. We are just uh, on the first computation of the interest. So we still need to continue. For the remaining six months to end the first year, we have 21,200 as our new principal times 6%. That will give us 1,272 pesos. We will add the new principal 21,200 and 1,272. We will get the new principal at the end of the year. That's 22,472.00. This will be our new principal again. After six months, we will compute another interest. So you can see right now the computation of interest is done not just once. That's, that is why it is called a compound interest. It becomes greater in value as the principal also becomes greater. So the 22,472 will be multiplied by the same Interest rate 6%, so that's 1,348. That's at the end of one and a half years. And then the new amount, the new principal is 23,820.32 at the end of 1.5 years. This will be computed again for another interest at 6%. 1,429.22 is the new amount of interest at the end of two years. So we will add this principal 23,820.32 and 1,429.22 we will obtain 25,249.54 at the end of two years. So we have computed the interest four times because all in all, we will have four as the number of our N, that's the total number of conversion for the term, since this problem is about semi-annually for two years. So 25,249.54 is our answer, is the answer to the problem find the amount, the compound amount for 20,000 pesos, given all those things. If we are going to follow this uh, computation, we will get the correct answer, but we will be prone to mistakes because the computation will happen every now and then, and this is not practical. That is why we will use the formula in finding for the compound amount. And as we can see, since there is a repetition of calculation, we can see an exponent in the formula. So to solve for the compound amount in a compound interest problem, it is uh, computed using the formula either F is equal to P times the quantity of one plus J over M raised to the power of TM or F is equal to, the, to P times the quantity of one plus I raised to the power of N. If the amount of interest is unknown, then you can just simply subtract F from P. Or I mean, you can subtract F to P or you can subtract P from F. That is the right way to read I is equal to F minus P. P in our formula represents the principal, the original principal. F is the compound, the final amount to which P will accumulate. So therefore, F should be greater than P because we are accumulating P. That is why it is F. I is a compound interest. Small letter I is the periodic rate. That is equal to J over M. So as you can remember in our first example, 12% was given in the problem, but we use 6% in our computation because we are trying to get the value of the periodic rate. The 12% in the problem is the nominal rate. So that is represented by J. You need to divide that by M 
the number of conversion periods. So in the first example, the conversion period is semi-annually, so that's m is equal to 2. That is why we obtained 12% divided by 2, and we got 6% or 0 0.06. So that is how to compute the periodic rate. n is the number of conversion periods for the whole term, and again, that is expressed as the product of t, which is the time or term expressed in years, and m, the number of conversion period. So n is the overall the total number of conversion periods for the whole term, or if you are going to compute manually, then it uh, means the many times, the, no the number of times that you are going to compute simple interest to a new principal. And j is, again, the nominal rate of the interest per year. So for the same problem, where 20,000 is our principal, the term is two years, semi-annually, so that will give us two times two, four for our N, and 12% is the nominal rate, semi-annually, so it's 12% divided by two, 6% is our interest rate that we will be using, and two is the number of years that is already expressed in years, so there's no problem with our T, it's two, M is equal to two, because it is semi-annually. After getting all these values, we can use either the first formula, this one, or the second one. So it's up to you. So for this example, I use the first formula. So I will just compute the value of i in my solution, as well as for the value of my n, I will just also compute this in my solution since I express my n as tm here and my i as j over m here. So we have P that will be represented by 20,000, copy 1, that's constant, plus J is 12%, and then M is 2, so you can have it here. But if you use I here in your formula, then you will just substitute this with 6% or 0 0.06. And we have, uh, for the exponent, T times M, we have 2 times 2. That will give us after calculating these values properly, following the correct syntax in your calculator, you will get 25,249 pesos and 54 centavos. That is the first example. So as you can see, we have the same answer when we computed it manually, 25,249.54. So we have the same value. Next example, accumulate 15,000 pesos for five years at 6% compounded quarterly. This problem is also about getting the compound amount because of the clue word accumulate. It means that 15,000 is our principal. Five is our term that is already expressed in years. So T is equal to five. 6% is our nominal rate. So we, we will represent this as J, not I. So 6% is equal to 0 0.06 because when you convert percent to decimal, it will just move two places to the left. So that is why we have 0 0.06 or 0 0.06. Compounded quarterly, quarterly, the number of conversion period is 4. So M is equal to 4. Now I use the formula F is equal to P times the quantity of 1 plus I raised to N. So I need to get the values of I and N so that I can just replace them and compute it directly using my calculator. So to compute for your n, for the exponent, you just have t, which is 5, times 4, your m. So 5 times 4 is equal to 20. That's why it's raised to 20. And then i is equal to j over m. That's 6%, the 0 0.06, divided by com uh, compounded quarterly 4. So 0 0.06 divided by 4 is 0 0.015. That is why I have... 0 0.015 here. Using my calculator, I will get 20,202.83 pesos if I just follow the, co the correct syntax. That is the second example, which is also similar to the third example. But this time, the principal is 8,000. That's the amount deposited by Grace and Donna in the savings account at 5%. So 5% is our nominal rate. That is equivalent to 0 0.05 or 0 0.05. If interest is compounded monthly, so monthly means that the number of conversion period is 12. You are going to compute it 12 times in a year. And uh, this will be for two years 
because the question is what will the amount of their deposit be at the end of two years so two is our t and there is no need to convert that because that is already expressed in years so i also use the same formula f is equal to p times 1 plus i the same with the second example so i need to have i so i computed i first j over m and n t times m then i have obtained this number as you can see i did not write the value for 0 0.05 divided by 12 because that is a non-terminating decimal so i do not need to compute for the estimate value, that's why I just wrote the exact value, whatever the value of 0 0.05 over 12 is. So that's the rule of thumb. Do not compute, do not estimate your uh, numbers when you are still in the process of solving. The final stage, that is getting your final answer, will be the moment of conversion to or rounding off to the nearest hundreds or whatever the instruction is. For this, particular problem since we are dealing with money it is always understood it must always be automatic that the conversion or the expression of your answer is in the nearest centavo so last two decimal places so please uh, try to compute using your calculator follow the syntax and be sure that you have obtained the same answer 8839.53 so that's 8,839 pesos and 53 centavos. That's a compound amount. So 8,000 becomes 8,839 pesos and 53 centavos. If that is deposited at 5% compounded monthly for two years. The fourth problem is still the same, but this time the principal is 6,400 and the amount of time is not exactly in years we have four years and five months so in this particular problem you're expected to express the remaining months into years that is why as you can see here in the given t is equal to four and five over 12 because there are 12 months in a year so that is a mixed number then we have 5.5 percent uh, that is the rate the nominal rate Convert it into decimal, move two places to the left, so that is 0 0.055. Compounded semi-annually, so semi-annually means that the number of conversion period is 2. So to get your I, you can have J divided by M, that's 0 0.0275. N is equal to T times M, 4 and 5 over 12 times 2. As you can also observe here, I use uh, fractions because again, if you're going to compute 4 and 5 over 12, times two, you will get a non-terminating decimal. So if your calculator will just give you 10 digits, so it will be occupied. So again, do not estimate or convert your answer to the nearest hundreds when you are still computing. So I wrote exactly the number 53 over six as it is, and then substitute the other values for P and I then I will get 8,260.12. You should also get the same answer. That is the correct answer for number four. Fifth example. Okay, find the compound amount and interest. So we have to give two answers for this particular problem. On 9,700 pesos for five years and three months, a 6% converted semi-annually. So we have 9,700 as our principal, 6% as our nominal rate or 0 0.06. Semi-annually will give us the value of M, which is two. And for the term that is five years, that is already in years, but the remaining three months must be converted into years. So that is five and three over 12 or five and one fourth. Or we can also use the decimal form that's 5.25. Since I'm using the formula I and then N, so I need to get the values of I and N. So I is equal to my J over M. So it's 0 0.06 divided by 2, that's 0 0.03. And N is equal to T times M. So multiplying this value 5.25 and 2, then you will get 10.5. Substitute P 
i and n respectively to f is equal to p times the quantity of 1 plus i raised to the power of n, then you will also get the same answer, 13,230.08. That is a compound amount. We need to get also the compound interest because it is also asking for the compound interest. The compound interest obtained is just equal to the compound amount minus the principal. The principal is 9,700, so we are going to subtract 9,700 from our answer, the final amount or maturity value of 13,230.08. That will give us 3,530 pesos and 8 centavos. And that is the answer for the compound interest. We have six, the sixth problem, and this is a bit complicated. I will read, find at the end of 13 years, find the amount rather at the end of 13 years of 5,500 pesos, which is invested at the rate of 12% compounded quarterly in the first four years, 10% compounded semi-annually in the next seven years, and 8% annually in the remaining years. So as you can see, the term of this compound interest problem is 13 years, but within 13 years, different rates and different period of conversion were specified. So it means that the, comp the computation will be not uh, the same with the previous examples because you need to have three sets of computation in this example for the three different values of uh, rate and conversion period not to mention also the time. So for the first scenario, we have 12% compounded quarterly for the first four years. So I have here the first set of computation, wherein 5,500 pesos is our original principal. So this will be accumulated. At 12%, that's the nominal rate, J, that's 0.12, compounded quarterly, that's M is equal to four for the first four years, and is the, uh, T is equal to four, rather. So to get the I, we have J over M, divide 0.12 by 4, you get 0 0.03. And N, T times 4, I mean T times M, that's 4 times 4, we have 16. So calculating this, 5,500 times the quantity of 1 plus 0 0.03 raised to the power of 16, you will get 8,825.885415. So I did not express my answer to the nearest and double, so I don't need to apply rounding off. Because again, the rule of thumb is no rounding off if that is not the final answer yet. We still need to accumulate again this one. This will be our new principal. Exactly this amount will be the new principal for the second scenario of this problem that it will become 10%. That's the rate. And the composition or the conversion will be semi-annually. That's M is equal to 2. In the next 7 years or so 7 years will be the next value of T. It means that your I is equal to 0.5 because it's equal to J over M. That's 10%, 0 0.10 or 0 0.1 divided by 2, our M for semi-annually. And our N is equal to 14 because that is expressed as 7 times 2 or T times M. So substituting your P, your new value of P from our computation in the first scenario, then our I, 0 0.5, and our N, 14, then we will obtain 17,474.64943. Again, I did not convert my answer to the nearest centavo or whatsoever because this is not the final answer yet because this is uh, still under the 11th year for the 13 years term of this compound interest. This 17,474.64943 will become our new principal for the last scenario, which is deposited at 8% annually or invested at 8% annually in the remaining years. So 11 years has passed and we have 13 years for the whole term. So it means that the last scenario will be having the value of 2 for your T. Okay, so we have T is equal to 2. This is the new principal. And the nominal rate is 8%, so 0 0.08. If we will divide it by 1 because it's annually, then we will obtain the same answer, 0 0.08. Our T is equal to 2. That's why our N is still 2 because it is also converted annually. So 2 times 1, T times M is equal to 2. 
So substituting those values, P, I, and N, then we have 20,382.43. And here is our final answer. So that's why I rounded off or I expressed my answer to the nearest centavo, knowing that this is money. So at the end of 13 years, with the different rates and different conversion periods, the money is now 20,382.43 or 20,382 pesos and 43 centavos. That is from the original amount of 5,500. So that is the beauty of the compound interest. Your money will really increase at a greater rate as compared to the simple interest. So the last example is also similar to the sixth example, wherein the conversion is more than one. I will read the last example, Mr. Halasan made a time deposit of 5 million pesos in a savings bank. The deposit was left to accumulate at 10%, 10% to be clear, compounded quarterly for the first six years and 15% compounded semi-annually for the next six years. Find the compound amount at the end of the term, so the overall number of years in this particular compound interest problem is 12 years. And for the first six years, that will be the first scenario, so your T is six, the 5 billion peso principal is deposited at 10%, so that's 0.10 or 0.1. J will be 0.1. Compounded quarterly, M is equal to 4. Divided by 4 and 0.1, J over M, to obtain I, that is 0 0.025. And to obtain the number of conversion period for the rest of the term, we will multiply T and M six times four, that's 24. So we have 5 million, our principal, times the quantity of 1 plus our I, 0 0.025, raised to the power of our N, that's 24. We will get 9,043,629.748. Again, we have three decimal places here because that is the exact value given by the calculator. We, do, we don't need to convert this one yet because this is not the final answer. For the remaining six years to obtain the overall scenario of the problem, our next uh, given will be 15% for the nominal rate, that's 0.15. M will be two because it is se semi-annually and our term is six years. So the new principal, 9,043,629.748 will be multiplied by the value of our quantity one plus I, which is 0 0.075. And again, this is obtained by dividing J and M. Raised to the power of 12. And again, N is equal to T times M. That's why we have 6 times 2, 12. Calculating this and rounding off our answer to the nearest centavo, because this is now the final computation, we get 21,539,932 and pesos and 83 centavos. Again, that's 21,539,000. 932 pesos and 83 centavos as our final answer. So that is all about the compound amount. And I hope you have obtained and realized the difference between simple interest and compound interest. Have you obtained the knowledge necessary for you to understand this problem? If you have some questions, then you can just send me a message. Please answer your assignment. It will be labeled as exercises on compound interest, finding compound amount, which will be uploaded in your Quipper. That would be all for this particular session. Thank you so much. Have a good day.